I started blogging while I was uh, doing my PhD in, uh, in biochemistry at, at the University of Toronto. And um, I, I just wanted to talk a bit about science in general to, to a public um, a general audience because I, I felt that a lot of people didn't really know what I was doing in the lab and why I spent so much time in the lab. And while I was doing that, I, um, I found that it created some opportunities for writing. So I actually decided after I finished my PhD to not go on and do a postdoc, but instead um, do more science writing. And I'm currently um, applying for jobs in a more science communication sphere. So connecting scientists rather than being one myself. And that's what my blog basically helped me decide. I can't say whether my blog has actually changed anything in the world, but I do know that it has changed me. Um, I've become interested in the uses of new technology for teaching and scholarship, in how technology alters public conversations and how it does not, and in what it means to create a scholarly arena where people can disagree about ideas across time, space, and status. But blogging is first and foremost about writing, and writing in a way that foregrounds play as well as intellect. This makes blogging fundamentally different from how we were all brought up to write in graduate school, which is that writing is our principal work. What blogging also allowed me to do was to think seriously and productively about what brought me to this profession in the first place and work specifically to make that thing happen in a new way. Blogging allows me to write short pieces, work on form, voice, and getting complex ideas across to an audience that I need to entice every day in order to keep them reading. I sometimes compare it to a pianist playing scales. To the extent that blogging is not, perhaps, the most serious scholarly form, to take it seriously is to become a better writer and a better thinker. I think the question of what, what kind of relation your blog actually might have to your career is a really, really fraught one and something that everybody has to decide for themselves. Perhaps it's just my personality, but I found that I was way too unbuttoned when I was pseudonymous. Um, it, was, it was much easier for me to displace all kinds of things that I would not say to people's faces onto the blog. Um, and, and because I deal with contentious academic issues, um, I, th I think it was very important for me to deal with that. If anything, I think that the people who subsequently found out about the blog, a few grad student friends who did figure out that it was me, um, were, were pleased with it, liked it. Um, because one of the things that I, I try to do with it is to be open about my own ambivalence, but not so much, I didn't, crit I didn't bitch a lot about other people. I kind of bitched about my own kind of position in the academy and do I really want to be doing this or not. Um, but I was careful about that even so. F strangely, that said, I, I too have become more careful since I'm out, but what I'm more careful about, and this really bothers me, is my private life. Um, I'm, I'm more careful about writing about, writing honestly about what I'm doing now that I'm a housewife than I was as an academic, um, because the person who I would be writing about would be my husband, right, or my, you know, people who I am intimate with. So I'm thinking a lot about what that means in terms of the whole personal public uh, juxtaposition that I, that I like messing around with in the blog. I'm in a little bit different of a position than the two of you in that when I started my blog, which I think was around 2003, um, I was an untenured professor. I now have tenure. Um, but it was always a blog under my name. My name is in the blog spot, the dress that I chose. And although really it was very much just as a form of writerly play for me, it was vaguely linked in my mind to the fact that I just published my first novel, and it was clear to me that in the, I, I had traveled on very little money to do a number of readings at a number of places, but it was clear to me that the future of book promotion was going to be very much online, and I thought that it would be useful for me to develop a blogging voice and a set of blogging habits like before my next novel was published, so I wasn't trying to learn in a hurry, you know, on the spot. So I always had that particular kind of a public 
um, readership in mind that needed to be tied to my other publishing identity. I think one of the things being a blogger has really raised for me is what is public and what is yes. private. And specifically for women. I mean, I think it's a, it's a really important feminist question. I think it's a really important question for queers um, that we aren't actually permitted privacy um, in the sense that, you know, more established people in the community are permitted privacy. And I also think for women. I mean, you know, one of the big themes in the blogosphere is you know, how do people perceive me? Um, I'm making a great generalization here, but I mostly see women talking about that. I don't see men talking about that. Um, and so are women ever allowed privacy, really, when they're being scrutinized like that, I think is a big question. As a historian, Technology is a real paradox for historians because on the one hand, there's a whole group of people like uh, Josh Freeman and Steve Breyer at the American Social History Project, um, Roy Rosenzweig, the late Roy Rosenzweig um, down at George Mason, who did amazing things with technology before it was popularized in the ways it was. So historians have really been kind of at the forefront of, of technology. And the profession as a whole has really not dealt with electronic publication, period. So blogging, dealing with blogging is way down the line when the profession can't even agree as to whether a refereed online journal should count for your tenure case. I, I just want to get back to the, the question about whether blogging can be beneficial for getting tenure. It, um, uh, there are actually several people um, in, in science blogging who who put it in their uh, on their CV under outreach activities, and when that is part of the required tenure package, then it's it definitely is beneficial, especially if they're there with their full name and affiliation on the front page. They're basically promoting their university far wider than they ever could, and for free. And another thing is, um, this is for me the third time that I've been invited to publicly speak on a panel or give a talk that is a direct result of having a blog. And while the blog itself is not on my CV, these things definitely are. So it, it can start other projects that are more respected than, than just having a website somewhere on the internet that anyone can start. So it's uh, yeah, I think that that's my sense of it, is that it, it functions well in terms of kind of service or other publications. Like it's not gonna count as a, as a you know, refereed publication. I, I like Michael Barabay's distinction between raw writing and cooked writing, right? It's blogging is kind of the raw and then the kind of refereed journal stuff is the cooked stuff. If you are linking other places, eventually somebody's going to notice. And this is how I've gotten linked to, um, like, the National Review, <laughs> which was a somewhat peculiar experience, um, and, um, <laughs> and um, CNN, um, Fox News I got linked to. It's, you know, you link to something. If they're getting a lot of hits from your blog, invariably they're going to go and say, what is this, and, and keep an eye on you. Um, so, and which I think is actually one of the most enticing things about blogging nowadays because it's simply true that with fewer and fewer print publications, um, it's harder to get published. It's particularly hard to get published in a way that people who aren't academics are going to read you, just regular intelligent readers. Um, and that's a really big change in the last quarter century. Um, it's also a really big change that you need so many connections to get published in a place like The Nation or, you know, places where you want to be read by, say, like-minded individuals or the National Review, um, if, if you're conservative. Um, and to get published in the National Review as a liberal would be unheard of, right? So, so I think there is some potential, more potential than there is with paper publications nowadays for those links actually um, allowing you to be read by people who will take an interest in you, people who wouldn't ordinarily find you in the world.